بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم continue on in our discussion of taqwa Allah azza wa jal and may Allah bless us all with taqwa to have have those to have this attribute of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah increase us all in our iman increase us all in taqwa Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah bless us to be on our scale of good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this Ramadan to be fruitful for us all. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Looking at some of the statements of the Salaf of this Ummah regarding taqwa, God fearfulness. And as we said before, taqwa refers to putting a barrier between yourself and the hellfire and it is also in reference those things that you put between you and the hellfire the shield of taqwa is that you hold steadfast to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger alayhi salatu wa salam and that you avoid his prohibitions, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam prohibited us from. And that's the reality of taqwa. That's the reality of taqwa. And some of the statements of the Salaf of this Ummah regarding taqwa, we have the statement of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, who, which we already read, where he said, المتقون الذين يحذرون من الله عقوبته He said that those people who are the muttaqun, those people who have taqwa, they fear Allah, those are the ones who exercise and practice taqwa, practice fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are those who beware the punishment of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. وقال حسن حسن البصري رحمه الله تعالى one of the tabi'een كبار التابعين one of the major scholars of the who met sahaba and, 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 and took knowledge from the sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم اجمعين الحسن رحمه الله تعالى he said المتقون المتقون اتقوا المتقون اتقوا ما حرم عليهم وأدوا ما افترض عليهم. He said, المتقون, the pious ones, fear what a, what has been prohibited from them. They stay away from it. They put a shield between them and what has been prohibited for them. And they do and exercise what they've, what they've been commanded to do. You know, what is an obligation upon them? A fard. This is a state of ahl taqwa the muttaqun. Allah has prepared Jannah for the muttaqin. Allah loves the muttaqin. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has commanded us with taqwa all throughout the Quran. يَا يُلَذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تُمُتُّنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Oh you يَا يُلَذِينَ آمَنُوا Oh you who believe اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ Fear Allah حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ The true taqwa وَلَا تُمُتُّنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state as, as Muslims, as believers in Allah. May Allah bless us to be in that state. وَقَالَ عُمَرْ بِنْ عَبْدَ الْعَزِيزِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He said, لَيْسَ تَقْوَ اللَّهِ بِسِيَامَ النَّهَارِ وَلَا بِسِيَامَ اللَّيْلِ وَتَخْلِيدْ فِيهِمَا بَيْنَ ذَلِكِ وَلَكِنْ تَقْوَ اللَّهُ تَرْكْ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَأَدُوا 
ما افترض الله سبحان الله عمر بن عبد العزيز رحمه الله تعالى said a beautiful beautiful statement which contains those other statements and other definitions of taqwa and that's the beauty of, you, you'll find of the salaf a lot of times their definitions of, uh, of how they understood uh, terminologies and stuff were inclusive or sometimes one will emphasize one aspect of it and another will emphasize another aspect and another will come and emphasize both aspects but you'll see that they don't contradict one another and this is the minhaj, the methodology of the salaf of this ummah Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Taqwa, or he said, Taqwa of Allah, fearing Allah, it's not by fasting during the day, or standing in the night prayer, or even mixing between the two. He said, however, Taqwa Allah, is leaving what Allah has prohibited and enjoining what He has commanded. That's taqwa. It's practice. And maybe in another time we'll have a sitting where we'll just deal with that ethar. We'll just talk about that a little more in detail. That's just a little bit about taqwa Allah and we'll continue to have our sittings here uh, related to taqwa and various aspects of taqwa Allah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with taqwa and forgive us for our wicked and evil sins and forgive us for the hypocrisy that we have. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us with al-nafi, ruskan tayyibu, amal al protect us from kufr, shirk, and nifaq and protect us from all those things which he hates and protect us from our wicked sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.